Let's get into these Eagles. Though. Eagles, last team of the uh, of the NFC East. Yep. Probably the most interesting. Yeah, I mean, at, well, they're kind of boring in the sense that they're basically retooled right, right up. Like, they've been off busy this offseason. Howie Roseman has gone to work. Somehow he convinces Jason Kelsey to come back for a year. How could you not after that Super Bowl loss? Right, which, so they brought back four of the five starters on the offensive line. They lost Isaac Suamalo to Pittsburgh Steelers. And, but they have a 22 second round pick coming in. Cam Jurgens, they'll slide into right guard. Everything else stays the same. So, PFF number one ranked offensive line coming into this year. We can pull up some a little bit of stats here. Do we have the offensive line right there? Yes, we do. No change other, no change from the final ranking. So, they finish as one, they're starting one on, on the line. So, that's, that's really good. They did replace Miles Sanders, who got a four-year, $25 million deal, with DeAndre Swift, who they gave four years, $8.5 million. Is Miles Sanders three times better than Swift? Probably not. So I think that's a, a good deal there that they made. They got a slew of other guys in the running boot back room. We'll get to that. Uh, they already have one of the best wide receiver duos in the league, A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith. Uh, De- Devonta Smith's only coming into his third year on his rookie deal, Bo. They have a fifth-year option. So, like, there's no hope. <laughs> For Devonta Smith getting out of here anyways for the foreseeable future. So he's kind of stuck in this ecosystem, which may or may not be a good, bad thing, right? Uh, And then last but not least, they signed Jalen Hurts to a five-year, $255 million extension, $179 million guaranteed. Nice little backup policy with Marcus Mariota. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Nice little backup policy with Marcus Mariota. So I think that's where the most relevant fantasy player obviously starts here. We'll just work our way down uh, the ADP. We got Jalen Hurts, okay? Superflex King. No questions at all about whether or not he's the future there. They just paid him a gazillion dollars. Woo! No, I'm just kidding. And, you know, he's he's rocketed up ADP. You know, yeah. he's he's now, what is he, the third? He is, is QB3. He QB3. Is that where he, are you are you there? Uh, yeah, sure, that's fine. You I'm, taking him over uh, Burrow? Uh, yeah, I'll take him over Burrow, just rushing upside. But are you um, taking Mahomes and Allen first? Yes. I've seen him go one, too. Yeah, uh, I'm fine with that. And, I, you know, I, I would. I'm, I would take Burrow. I mean, that's, that's a you problem, but whatever. I think I think Hertz averaged five more points a game than Burrow did. Um, and that's really that's just what you're getting. You're just getting, you know, the the rushing upside. He scores a ton of touchdowns on the ground. He rushes around. That's kind of just part of his game. Will he will he play until he's forty? Probably not. But that's not a your concern right now. Yeah, um, he's he had, well built, and uh, you know he's he's ready to roll. He's um, ready to roll. He he did. He had thirty seven hundred passing yards, twenty two touchdowns. 758 rushing yards to 13 touchdowns on the ground. And mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if that's necessarily sustainable. The over-under for him is 3,700 yards, 22 and a half touchdowns. So they're basically expecting him to repeat there. The rushing is 700 over-under and then nine and a half. So they think it'll dip right. down on so the So they're kind rushing. of keeping everything the same. The, the question for me is, is how much did Shane Steichen's system offense all play into kind of developing and what Hurts is doing tied with – uh, Sirianni. Right. Um, so Steichen's off to the Colts, obviously. they Brian Johnson is going to step in as the offensive coordinator. He was the QB coach in mm-hmm. 21 and 22. Fun so. fact, he actually has known Jalen Hurts like most of his life since mm-hmm. he was in preschool. He was really close with the entire family. Hurts' dad was his high school football coach. Right. So a lot of continuity there. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I think regardless, I don't think there's a huge step back. I think Sirianni and, and like you said, the quarterback coach, a lot of continuity. So I think I think that's all good, positive. I don't I don't worry too much about it being a problem necessarily moving forward. No, I mean he's probably going to get better. It yeah. seems like the kind of guy he is, right? I think I think he'll keep improving. I don't know if statistically he's going to get all that better. much better, um, but he could certainly could. But I think he'll I hit think that it was seven hundred rushing yards. Pretty fucking awesome. Um, I would like him not to, um, just for his personal health and throw for a little bit more but i mean it is i don't think is it you walk a dangerous line there Mm -hmm. you know take away those things that make him so dangerous um you know i i i think justin herbert's a bit of a of a buy here i'd put maybe even herbert over burrow again because i think i think herbert kind of stopped running around once he got those ribs ribs fucked up and then the deep ball stopped kind of coming out so 
I think Herbert left a lot on the table, and I think you're about to just see it. And then those I wide think receivers you add, for a chunk. I too. think you add Kellen Moore into that mix. I think everything goes up with Herbert. Um, so I, I might even put Herbert over there, and I could, I could, I could see by the end of this season Herbert being over Hertz, or at least in consideration for me. Um, but no, Hertz is Hertz is firmly planted in the three spot right now for me. A little bit more on what the Eagles did this off season. They had the number one passing defense in 2022. They did lose both their safeties and linebackers to free agency, but they re-signed Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham to a one-year deal after Kelsey signed. So they bring back two hogs and then pick Hog up Malice. They pick up Terrell Edmonds from the Steelers. They re-signed Darius Slay and James Bradbury. So those are huge picks. And then somehow they ended up with Jalen Carter. Yeah, in the and, draft and uh, and the the linebacker right. Owen Smith, right? Yeah, yeah. So just uh, just doing incredible work yeah, last year they got the, they got the other uh they, they got they got four or five georgia bulldogs in like the last two years or something crazy like that uh, that are that are really solid defensive players um so yeah and they they really hammer you on the defensive line and and you know we don't talk a ton of defense here on this fantasy forward show but just just plays into you know vegas has them at Jordan 11 Davis and a half 11 and a half and the kobe dean right what are we talking about here yeah like fucking the rich get richer you know and that's what happened in this year's draft just Jalen carter falling down yeah picked him i think at nine somehow the fans will end up complaining but whatever yeah you will never be happy yeah, i love you guys I'll never whatever. be happy he married a philadelphia eagle so I he can talk shit i guess I, they're so. my people they really they, <laughs> at, at heart they are i just don't like i don't like the way they treated people no I, it's like the only it's like you watch silver linings playbook and like you're about to get <laughs> in a fight with your own fans. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you can't even go to a game and, and not fight your own fans. Boys had a jail up in that in the veteran <laughs> stadium, bro. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, let's, uh, let's take it to the next fantasy relevant player here. What are we doing? And we got, we got A.J. Brown, right? Mm-hmm. Just uh, had an incredible year last year. Wide receiver four overall in our ADP, two, three. Uh, so, CD Lamb or AJ Brown? Um, CD Lamb. Me too. So it's AJ- close though. I'm not going to begrudge either way. Um, fine with that. And and you know Garrett Wilson with with A Raj this year could be coming for that for that spot. Could be coming for that spot for CD too. Either one of those. And Garrett, I gu- I Garrett Wilson Garrett- with 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 A Raj could could really you know take take a spot over and really take it to the next level. Um, but I don't really. There's not that many other guys that I see supplanting A.J. Brown or C.D. Lamb outside of Waddle and Garrett Wilson, potentially. Yeah, I mean, what A.J. Brown did last year was really incredible. 11th in targets with 137, ninth in receptions at 95, fourth in yards, four yards under 1,500, fifth in yards per reception at 17.0, 11th in touchdowns with 11, and second in... Five hundred sixty-five. It's a common theme with these guys. I got stats here for Smith, Goddard, and, and AJ Brown, and they're all just crushing yak. Yeah. You know, Devonta Brown was or Devonta Smith was ninth in yak for wide receivers, and Dallas Goddard was third and only played twelve games in yak. So good offense. Good. They spread them out. They can beat you on the ground. Hurts can beat you on the ground. He makes good decisions. Very few interceptions. And they divvied out the targets pretty evenly, and A.J. Brown made the most of it, you know, yards per reception and touchdowns. Do you see that continuing? You know, I don't know. I, I think I got to take C.D. Lamb. A.J. Brown or Garrett Wilson? Uh, A.J. Brown for me right now, but like I said, just – The age uh, alone I, I, is pretty, I think, pretty significant. Sure, and I think that Rodgers could elevate Wilson. And then what they're know. saying, that Rodgers is probably going to play another year? It seems like two. Does that weigh into your Garrett Wilson at all? Uh, yeah, sure, it does. I mean, but, you know, we're just, you know, it's, it's A.J. Brown right now. Um, but, that, that, like I said, it's either Garrett Wilson or Waddle, I think the two names that could challenge to, to really supplant uh, C.D. And, and A.J. Brown here next year. Um, A.J. Brown or Brees Hall? Uh, give me Brees. A.J. Brown or Anthony Richardson? Mm, Richardson. So we're moving him down a little bit. Dak well, Prescott. I got it. I got Richardson at two two and Brown at two three, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about Dak? Oh, give me Kyler. AJ Brown. Going Kyler's Brown over Kyler's Dak close. Kyler? Kyler's close. Kyler's underrated. 
just uh, obviously injured and we're kind of unsure what's going to take place in the future for him and for the system that was there. But it seems like clear in the air for Kyler uh, that him and uh, homeboy didn't didn't quite see eye to eye. The head coach Kyler's close. I'll take AJ right now. Jonathan Taylor. Um, I think I'm still going JT. Yeah. All right. Last one. Jalen Waddle. Because we, we would have had him coming into I'll take, last year. I'll take AJ, AJ. I'll take AJ Brown, but like I said, that 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 needle could be threaded uh, to Waddle, and I, I want all the Waddle I can get. I think Waddle is the is the guy who could support, could could take over. Justin could come for that number one spot, <laughs> like Luda Steve, said. Steve. <laughs> plot, plot. <laughs> um, obviously, you have Tyree Kill there, but if there was an injury or a step back from Hill at any point. Waddle, I think, has the, the most upside ability uh, to come for those spots. So I'll I'll stay Brown for now because Brown has, you know, s- similar upside and the yak ability and just built like a Adonis, uh, you know, so and, and in a good system and in a good offense. Um, 26, though. Yeah. You know, I think you're all right. Probably till 30 here. So. Did stay healthy all of last year, which is probably a major boon to his. Right. So, waddle close for me. I'll lean AJ Brown, but you know, if Tua stays healthy all all year. I think you could see AJ Brown like numbers from Waddle. Don't have a potential out until twenty twenty five. So you're getting two more years at least, and then that's going to be <laughs> thirty million dead. How can they have a potential out with thirty million dead? So Hertz and AJ Brown are together for at least the next three seasons, and then it's still even twenty million dead. At his age, twenty nine year. So you're like you said, if you can make it till thirty, I think you got you got four more years of AJ Brown and Jalen Hurts. Yeah, I would assume so. Hard to argue with that. Yeah, it is. It is hard to argue with that. Let's um, take it over to Devonta Smith. Get a couple years younger. Similar similar numbers, although you know didn't didn't quite have the. Yards per tar- yards per reception or the touchdowns. Real he quick, was, Waddle only a hundred and fifty or so yards off of AJ Brown and only three touchdowns away from AJ Brown with a banged up Tua. So, you know that that's not at the end all be all. But I just wanted to see how close they I were. I could I could definitely take Waddle over AJ Brown. I wouldn't. Seventy five catches, eighty eight catches, one hundred thirty seven targets to one hundred and fourteen for Waddle. So. And Waddle playing with arguably the best wide receiver in the game right now. Right. I mean, Tyreek was at the top, top, tippy top. Right. So. Tippy top to the tippy tay. Okay. A little booty right. tag. <laughs> <laughs> Devonta Smith, 132 targets, only five off from A.G. Brown. They were like right. A.G. Brown was tied for 11th. He was 13th. Yeah, Devonta Smith had a fucking zero week one. Right. <laughs> and we were like, you Yo. got to trade for Devonta Yo. Smith. You heard it here. 88 targets. That's 11th. They were bang, bang, right back to back. Only uh, four yards off of 1,200. So 300 yards less than than A.J. Brown. Only 12.6 yards per reception, which was 49th. So I don't know how he could be any good. Yeah. That low of yards per reception. Seventh, or sorry, tied for 12th in touchdowns with seven. 487 yards, tied for ninth in yak. <laughs> So I, I I love Devonta Smith. I have a hard time not taking him. Where is he at in our ADP down there? Three twelve with T J S N and Drake. So I love that grouping. T to the bottom. No way. <laughs> T to the bottom. Uh, Drake. T actually could get out of Cincinnati here in a minute, depending T. on if they lock him up or not. For me, that would be I'd take Devonta over T. Taking Devonta over J S N. Um. You're taking JSN. I feel like you've taken JSN Normally. over Devonta. Normally. Drake London, you're taking uh, Drake over Devonta. Normally. So you, uh, you're shoving Devonta and T down in a tier. I, I'd put I'd put JSN and, and London up. Uh, Devonta right below those guys. And then I'd move T below Diggs and Cup. When you burp, you got to give it a second so I can cut that shit out. It's so <laughs> annoying. Your, your indigestion is it's real vain to the sh- I'm surprised we haven't gotten a bad review off of him. Nobody cares except for you. He's always like... "Mm." (laughs) (laughs) like, I'm trying to cut it out in post because it bothers the shit out of me. 
Nobody cares. For your pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> So do we cover Devonta Smith? Any other th- anything else on Devonta Smith? If you wanted to take him over Drake, I, I would. That's fine. My rationale there is that I just I think that's a bona fide number one there. Uh, I don't know how much it really matters in this day and age necessarily, but I think what Drake can be and do and and hog up, uh, you know, is it could be very valuable. I think we saw what we needed to see out of Drake, at least for me last year, uh, to know that he can do it. So. You know, I'm not going to be upset if you wanted to take Devonta Smith over Drake. And if you really said, you know, JSN for the first year, probably going to be potentially a little limited. And, and you know, yeah, is, is Devonta Smith going to outscore JSN? Most likely. Um, but it's about in the long term. And, and, you know, Devonta Smith is fucking awesome. So, yeah. I mean, we're splitting hairs here. Um, Saquon or Devonta Smith. I mean, I'd probably take Saquon right now. I just uh, question marks. So uh, for what's going on right now, I'll right. say Devonta Smith. But if we could clear that up, I'll take Saquon. Okay. I mean, All Saquon's, right. you know, potentially leading the team in receptions and. Yeah, yards. Yeah. Well, clearly rushing yards, but he, he definitely could be the lead receiver on the team. Let's I move. Think he was or was second in the team last year. So let's move over to the tight end position, shall we? Any other wide receivers you really want? I mean, I don't, no, I don't I even mean, do not, anything on not really. anybody else. It was basically like these three guys got all the targets, right? It doesn't matter. Uh, Hertz was, you know, Hertz had 460 attempts, which was 16th, but the team uh, was only 23rd. I must have, I must have those numbers off because it doesn't match. You think, was there anyone else taking passing attempts? Oh, Hertz missed some games. All right. So they were they had only they had 536 passing attempts to four, 544 rushing, so very very close. But that's 23rd in passing attempts and third in rushing attempts. But Hertz himself was 16th in attempts, 13th in completions, 13th in completion percentage, 10th in yards, 5th in yards per attempt. So they're efficient as hell, efficient. Mm-hmm. And then you know fourth best in interceptions with only six so not as much volume but very efficient very focused and funneled towards basically these three guys so dallas goddard was seventh in targets with 86 had 55 receptions which was 12th 700 yards good for seventh Uh, tied for fifth in yards per reception 12.8 three touchdowns that was good for 16th and then 428 yak which was third mentioned before only 12 games so Goddard is really getting things done from an ADT, ADP standpoint, or from from a, from a production standpoint. Not even having played that much, he is pick fifty six overall. This is always mm-hmm. as as we're always talking tight end premium, tight end six overall. That's in the towards the end of the fifth round. Gallus Goddard or George Kittle? <sighs> um. I, I think I think Kittle's the better player. Um, yeah, I think if you could guarantee me Purdy healthy and right, I'll I'll take Kittle because once that was in there and rolling, I, I, it seemed to be a little more uh, playable week in week out. But I feel like Goddard just reliability when he's playing, he gets decent volume. It's a good player. He's he's basically they, that's their three that's their three players. It's the three guys they divided up in between. Uh, with the Niners, you, you know, you have at least four in there now with Debo, CMC, and Ayuk, and then Kittle. Um, and then you can you throw some odd, you know, you throw Elijah Moore or uh, Mitchell in there, and you throw Juwan Jennings in there, and, you know, you, you got a douche check in there. And uh, potentially if, if Trey Lance is on the team, you're probably going to have some design runs and shit in there. So um, I like Kittle – as a player more, but I'm probably leaning Goddard. I, I would agree. But a, a broader question here. So if you're looking at this ADP list, you got Hawk up there at 4-7, you know, a whole round higher than Kittle and Goddard. See, si, see. Si. Are you even interested in taking Kittle or Goddard in this range? Uh, looking at the other players that are that are there. Yeah, I'm fine with Michael it. Michael Pittman and Javante Williams. You can get into your Traylon Burks and Pickens and Williams. You've got Jared Goff. You know, yeah, Goddard usually Quentin Johnston, Jordan around. Addison are those all players you're looking at taking versus a tight end? 
uh, Goddard sits around long enough for me to be interested in. Usually, you know, sometimes he'll fall a little below this. Um, but yeah, I mean, if if I'm if I missed Andrews, Hawkinson. Um, recently I haven't been taking Goddard. Um, and that's mostly just cause I was hammering the fuck out of him. Um, I moved to taking Schultz and Waller and Laporta and Mayer, which if you want to play it that way, that's fine. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not, not interested if I, if I'm tight end premium, if I'm not tight end premium, then this obviously drops down some of course, uh, but I'm probably not taking uh, in that case, I'd probably rather have Goddard than, or rather have Kittle than Goddard. Um, but you know, I'm probably not taking either one of them and I'll just wait. Um, but in tight end premium, Goddard just seems like the last sort of, uh, high, high value target, uh, left. And then it's kind of, you got to wait till the rookies, which you don't know what you're getting there, but I don't mind drafting one of those. But if you draft one of those, I feel like I'm obligated to take a Waller or, or a Schultz a little later if i take goddard i could kind of you know the old ronco uh set it and forget it uh those old infomercials that were on at three o'clock i don't know you didn't have cable when you're growing up so <laughs> thanks for telling me when i was four <laughs> um at night they had ronco was you know he had to set it and forget the, it the flex seal guy no that'll cost you thousands no no this guy was this, this was a me and my buddies used to get fucked super high and super drunk super late at night and like three in Have the morning sex. and sometimes uh <laughs> practice makes perfect um you know and that that commercial there was always there were so many parts of that info it was so long and it was just like so good uh, but i think i think so god are talking about the sex again <laughs> well sure uh that ronco said it and forget it uh you know goddard's a pretty set it and forget it guy there um, yeah i don't hate it but i i think there is a sl- i need i need those rookies to be gone addison johnston i need probably taking pit men no you taking goddard or pit i could go either way there and then, you know, I don't really want Christian Watson at that value. I'm, I don't really want Kirk or Goff at that value either. I'm looking. I'm fine with Goff, just age wise. Kirk's going to be so solid for you. Kirk could I mean, just up and retire. He, you know, he doesn't give a fuck. He could, but I mean, he's just he's just going to keep getting paid. And yeah. he's kind of fucking yoked and like way, <laughs> way more in shape than I pinned him for. Um, so I think you could get so solid. I mean, points per game wise, Cousins pretty solid uh, and then just they guess Hawk and Addison and 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 their defense kind of stinks so Kirk's interesting the golf resets the clock a few years back and we don't know exactly what you're going to get there long term but uh, I'm not not interested in golf at that range especially if I need my my QB2 um I just I see the Traylon Pickens and Williams I want to take a stab at one of those guys sure. and one of the rookies so I just yeah, but you could turn you could get the I'm, turn there you could get yeah one you get one of Goddard and Golf, and then one of Burks and Williams. Yeah. All right. One last guy that we need to talk about is DeAndre Swift and Penny. Penny for Who? your thoughts. Who? Nah, we don't need to talk about. Yeah, that. we can get Penny in we'll at the end. That guy. Uh, Swift. That? We talked about him on the last one that we did there a little bit because he was with um, where um, Miles, Miles Sanders, Sanders flip flop kind of was ADP wise and. ADP wise, I'm I'm probably not fuck messing with Swift here. You um, censure yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Never heard that had before. To burp. Oh, okay, hey, thanks. <laughs> um, probably not f- uh, messing with you around your, someone else's kid. Or <laughs> oh, I definitely really like. I really, I don't, I don't. I swear around the kids. I I don't celebrate it, but I don't, I don't, I don't like actively like. Yeah, try. I'm not like you, cocksucking mother. <laughs> Cock balls. Yeah, but <laughs> if one comes out, I'm not like. <gasps> still celebrate it. Um, your, your daughter did call someone fucking pussies, right? <laughs> uh, she called Nixon an asshole. <laughs> well, he is an asshole. That's <laughs> a. She's four. <laughs> like, he's not wrong. I mean, <laughs> just hey, listen. You can't say that. It's an adult word. You say it with your friends. You don't say it around. 
She can't say it at school. Like there, yeah. I don't well, care if you say it to me. But. It's just it's about respect with the kids. That's really all it is. It's just like look, you can't you can't swear at the Someone. at older people really. Like yeah. it's just it's about respect, and that's I mean your kids should learn that anyway by being around you and knowing how respect works and all that other stuff. And they got to like, be paying attention when though. when to not you know use certain things and say certain things. That's, I feel like that's just kind of the way that goes. You know, you can censor it from them all you want, but. There's some little dickhead at school that's swearing, so whatever. Yeah, you, you better be getting called to the principal's office for sure. Who, me? Yeah. Hey, you better call me. I'm not coming in for that shit. Like, <laughs> just Parent-teacher conference. It's not like I'm not going to stop and be like, hey, you can't you can't say that. Like, you know, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to tell that person, hey, quit snitching, you bitch. Like, <laughs> <laughs> little bitch-ass bitch. No, nah, we... we we don't like, like I said, you don't celebrate it. I try not to swear around them, but if I do, it's not a big deal. Well, she doesn't swear. So someone out there is really appreciating you uh, having censored yourself there for that one little second. But yeah, you totally went and ruined it by doing Jesus H. Like Christ. <laughs> DeAndre Swift, you're not interested there. Seven. No, I'll take Zay. I'll take Terry. I'll take Godwin. I'll take Marquise. I'll take Sanders. Uh, I know it's not because I don't like I would in this ADP I don't like him but I'll I'll trade for Swift if I can get it. Um you know, I don't mind I don't mind sending offers to get Swift. I don't not that's not going to include any of the guys around him there. Yeah. Um so, you know, if you could scroll down a round or 3 and then, you know, if if I was, you know, if I could send Dalvin Cook and figure out how to get uh, Swift, I'm into that. You Get know. a little, like you have to pay a little again, extra. Yeah, you might have to add a little something in there, but again, it's all relative to what your team's doing. But I, I still like Swift. I really like the player. I like, I like Some his bad skill news set. Came out of the day with Dalvin, so yeah. I mean, well, I just scrolled down and he was there. Yeah. Um, so Aaron Jones, um, will go up one. Um, you know, so I could, I could be down with that. I, 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 I still think he's a really good player I, th- I think I don't love how the Eagles deploy their running backs it's it's hard to kind of get a a grasp on on how and when to use them but he doesn't need very many no again he doesn't I, need much he was efficient with his touches he's efficient with his missed tackles with the ball in his hands in space schemed up I think he's great and if they're going to use him in that regard uh, I think that's awesome again they do have Gainwell who has a semi-similar skill set, not as skilled, uh, but, you know, good in the passing game. And Boston Scott, they love throwing him in the mix. Um, and Jalen Hurts will run it around. And they're not, you know, they'd almost have to scheme to him because they don't they don't check it to the running back. It doesn't seem a lot. I could be completely wrong. It wasn't my team to dig into, so I, I, I don't necessarily know. Uh, but I, Well, just knowing w- that watching and, had 20 receptions last year. Right. And, you know, I'm sure through the running backs, there's a decent amount of running back catches, but, you know, and Swift coming from Detroit didn't get very many goal line opportunities, may not get very many if, here either. If they have an idea of what they're doing with him and how they're using him, then he could be exciting. Um, because like you said, there is only three guys that a lot of this is going through. Um, but does, does does he seem like a must sell at that ADP? Yeah, if I could swap any of him, at, which I don't think that's realistic. You I can't. think you get in these startups and people are thirsty for running backs. Well, and sure. It's a, different, it's a different landscape a lot scarcity. of the times. Yeah. You know, for tr- trade value, but it's ADP is a good start to mm-hmm. figuring out the value a bit. Um, so I don't, if you could trade for, if you could trade, I'd swap Swift for more Hollywood Brown right away. I'd swap Swift for Zay. For like nobody's giving you one, one eight in a, nine. you know, in a rookie draft. You know, also different contexts of, you know, the draft startups versus rookies. There's a whole philosophy and whole, psychology of kind of how that all plays out terry godwin miles dotson uh friar um uh, mixon yeah i take i take him over any of those dudes um or I'd, I'd swap him for any of those dudes um maybe even cam Akers. probably cam Akers. um deontay johnson you'd rather have cam Akers. calvin ridley Jordan Love, I'll take I'll, if I could swap Swift for basically anybody within like twenty picks of him. I think I would, and it's no indictment on on Swift. I like the player a lot. I just I don't know how he's going to be used, and it's you know I don't know what the role is. So if I can get out, maybe I'll get back in at the end of the season because I do like the player. 
Uh, but Rashad Penny is is the guy. We have to. Real quick, I mean, he's, we, I think he's worth a shot. I mean, he was very good. He was very efficient in what he was doing. He just got hurt, um, and they picked him up. He's on the cheap. Um, he's definitely their best pure running back uh, that they have, um, and we know that O-line's good, and we saw what Miles Sanders can do. Um, a guy, you know, so I think I think Penny is is very intriguing uh, right here, uh, and I will. I got no problem drafting uh, Penny at all. Um, What's his ADP? Because it was it's a fourteen ten. So Clayton Toon in our ADP goes one ahead of Penny. So I'm cool with that. Like you're you're stabbing for running backs. The way I'm drafting my team is maybe I have a JT or a Brees or a Bijan, and then maybe I have uh, Damian Pierce or a Miles Sanders. Miles Sanders, and then I'm coming down here, and I'm going to be grabbing you know maybe a couple of rookie running backs, Clyde edwards alaire kind of type guys. Um, some Ajay P runs and then, you know, pennies and, uh, you know, those kind of guys. And then after pennies, it's Jalen Warren's and Donta Foreman's. So, you know, pennies probably got the most upside of any of those guys, um, potentially. Um, and then, you know, I don't mind putting Foreman on the team. Certainly don't mind putting Jalen Warren on the team. Um, so yeah, I think worth, worth a swing for sure. Especially the, in, in the style of, if you're running back rich, then no, don't fuck, don't be fucking with penny um but you know there's better i you know there's better shots better second like there's better rookie handcuffs to shoot for at that point i think probably um or you know there's michael thomas's or Ramon, or, or rondell moore's or cedric tillman's or nico collins's or you know um even I want those guys even a guy like Zach Evans, like it just seems like if the trajectory gets right on those guys and something happens that the value could shoot up on those other handcuffed running backs that are younger. Uh, I don't know how much, even if, I mean, Penny would have to be really lighting it up for the value to really just jump off the page and for you to get something awesome. There was a point in this off season where yeah. you probably could have made a little bit of money, uh, but that faded awfully quick. Uh, so, yeah, which we told you to go capitalize on that. Morning. Yeah. So last thing with the Eagles, I mean, I think it's the them, the Chiefs, and the Bills who are slated eleven and a half is the over under on DraftKings, and they have them the Eagles slated to win the NFC, the NFC, and make it to the Super Bowl and lose to the Chiefs again. So do you are you taking the Eagles to win the Super Bowl this year? No, no, no. It's too hard. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a tough. I mean, but so the Chiefs? No, I don't think it's either one. No, no, it's probably somebody new. I mean, that's a that's a pretty tough. But they like you know. re upped a lot of guys. They man. did. I mean, it just it, you know it's it's not that different. I mean, there's going to be a certain amount of skill that gets you to a certain point, and then it's injuries and luck. And there's you know, you played in the NFC Championship against the fourth without a, the team that you were playing didn't have a quarterback. Like that game could have went completely different and you're not even in the Super Bowl. So, like, anything could really happen. You know, I, I, I don't think divi – I think divisionally they're, they're probably still the best for sure. The NFC is certainly a little weak, uh, but there's always a surprise team, and, and anything can happen. So I, I just think it's really tough to be back in the, in the Super Bowl the next year. The Chiefs, you know, they got Mahomes. Uh, so anything can happen there. But, they, you know – that they're probably not making it to the Super Bowl either. Uh, if you're just going to play the odds, it's just it's a pretty difficult task there. So uh, it's not outside of the odds, and the odds makers like it. But who I, are you taking to win the Super Bowl? Then I mean, I'm taking the Niners for show. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, I think I think you could. I think the Bills could be right there. There's a bunch of teams that yeah. if they stay healthy and yeah. and they're they get hot at the right time that that you know. They could certainly win. Um, you know, NFC wise, it's a it's a bit it's a bit wonky and it's a bit uh, open there. But you know, I wouldn't be surprised if the Eagles lose in the first round of the playoffs. I don't think they don't make the playoffs by any means, though. Um, so you know, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Tell me that I'm an idiot. Tell me that the Eagles are definitely making it. Um, you know. But as soon as Jalen Hurts throws a couple of picks, the Eagles fans would be like, why we pay this bum? He sucks. Told you. Let's throw snowballs at him. Actually, let's throw batteries at him. Daryl's. Love you guys. 
appreciate y'all for joining us. If you're watching this, you know, hit that subscribe button. Head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty and uh, hit us with that $5 holler. We got extra shows, three a month, live hangs. We got ADP, Discord access, everything you could want. All wrapped up into one, the pleasure chest. Mm -hmm. It's very uh, pleasurable. Pleasurable, pleasurable, pleasurable. Appreciate y'all for joining us. We'll see you next time. Peace.